Yes, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Omoyele Shawara, and I'm reaching you live uh, today as promised. Uh, so I think it's 5 p.m. Nigerian time. I'm in the United States right now. I came in uh, yesterday morning from Lagos after about three weeks of uh, stay there. And I wanted to quickly use this opportunity to address uh, all of you uh, who are out there wondering what's been happening in the last uh, 24, 48 hours. When uh, I was airborne, I received a message uh, while in the air that uh, some people uh, claim that uh, they have now uh, suspended me and eight others within our political party, the African Action Congress, and therefore uh, went and uh, installed themselves. So I wanted to address this, not uh, because uh, it's so important. I honestly don't see much, you know, about it. We had expected it. We had expected that this would come. And our party was a lovely party that we built from the ground up. And they have been after the AAC soon after the election. Soon after the election, uh, the APC tried to use our party and reverse it. We resisted it. And after that, of course, uh, you saw that the interest in the party grew astronomically, such that when I went back to Nigeria this time around, it was, it was unbelievable. We had grassroots people who were coming to ask for us to come. Uh, they regretted voting for the other two political parties. There were a lot of people uh, that were talking to us. And the ideas that were espoused throughout the campaign, just in one year, has become the dominant idea that is contending with the old, antiquated, and corrupt ideas that's kept Nigeria where it is today. So I'm glad to join you. I will try and answer some of your questions and uh, interact with you. But first and foremost, uh, so you know, uh, there's nothing to worry about. Nothing, absolutely nothing to worry about. Uh, this is uh, for those of us who were in the students' uh, movement in the 80s and early 90s till uh, the end of military rule. This is something that is always, always uh, well known to us. It's a strategy used by the ruling party to uh, kind of stifle, very organized, very radical, and uh, uncompromising political organizations. They do them everywhere in the world, even in the United States. And they sponsor agents of government to create confusion, to create doubt, and uh, to create uh, some kind of crisis in these organizations. But that was is not the case, and I want to thank all of you. Uh, I've heard from so many of you, so much so that I almost felt it's uh, unnecessary to do this today, but one of the things I told you when we ended the election was that I'll rest for a bit and I will start re-engaging again. And when we're in Nigeria this time around, you all saw it, how we engage very well with uh, the people. But what is good, great news, is how many people out there actually loved what we did. And for all of you, all of you that uh, supported my candidate show and for all of you that supported our party the aac i want to thank all of you. you did fantastic and i don't need to tell you you know we have been able to change the face of politics but we could not change the crooked way our political operators uh, carry out the electoral process and that is what we must change next time it is the reason why we've been discussing in a different tone that we have to have a revolution uh, and the revolution is the only way out of uh, Nigeria's current political, social, and economic condition. Those who see Nigeria as their meal ticket must be separated from the national treasury. And we are willing and ready to do that. We are happy that all of you are on the same page with us. I wouldn't want to address so much about this element, but just to give you a little background, uh, when uh, we started uh, to run for office, early last year, it was around February 2018, we went around the world. Uh, so we launched, of course, a, face, uh, a Facebook page. We were reaching out to you and we traveled. And then we also launched uh, a GoFundMe account so that we can receive donation and support from Nigerians abroad. And it was the most transparent. Turns out that people at home were also very interested. So we opened a bank account. We didn't have a political party until August uh, 2018. So 
when we did, we you know opened an account for the political party. And as I'm speaking with you, not a dime of uh, the money that was sent into the account of the political party came to our campaign. In fact, our campaign made donations to the political party. Me, my friends and colleagues who started Take It Back movement, actually were the ones who paid for the registration of our political party. But we started suspecting uh, uh, our secretary, uh, who is Leonard Ezenwa. When during the registration of the party, he kept asking us to bribe INEC officials, and we said we can't because he runs uh, counter to our ideals to bribe public officials. In fact, I told him personally when he brought the INEC officials to me that uh, I was the one who exposed INEC officials collecting bribe in River State. Why would I give them bribe? I met with one of the INEC officials who came to us and I said, I cannot go and tell your boss that I cannot give bribe. We do not. If you don't want to register the party, that's your problem. So that's, that's where we started noticing that this individual was not in the same boat and on the same page with us. Well, because we are Democrats, uh, we opened our minds and we started working together until uh, we started seeing other traits. I cannot describe how many of them uh, we saw. You know, how he would come and say, you know, we should be making money with the party. He apparently said he used to work with Buhari, had worked with Jonathan before. He's worked in every, every election, which we didn't know. And that this is not the way to do things. We should get big people to give us money and use the money to you know, enjoy ourselves, to build a political empire. And we said we cannot do that. First, we cannot take money from people who we can't say are funding us publicly. And secondly, even if people want to donate, we should be able to account for them. But this kind of uh, suggestions will mean that we have to get in bed with people who's uh, in affiliation we can't disclose uh, publicly. So several of these things happened. But lo and behold, the worst thing happened when... Uh, after the party's convention, I was nominated as a candidate. We got information that uh, they plan to hijack the party and not allow me to become a candidate of the party. We didn't believe it until he came the day of the convention and said he wants to be chairman. I said, but you didn't tell us. Uh, so we went into the convention. The convention ended around 4 p.m. We couldn't go to the next phase of the convention, which is the election of candidates. INEC was there. We explained to INEC and INEC said to us, look, we are, we are a new political party. Why are you in a hurry? I must tell you guys, I'm very, very, I was very reluctant to continue as chairman of the party because over these years, because of my experiences politically and otherwise, I actually do not like those kind of responsibility that, you know, puts me in too many places at the same time. But our colleagues said, you know, most of the people that came from Take It Back movement, didn't come to become part of the old political system that we should guard our party jealously. This is not an explanation for not having the election so that you don't misinterpret, any, no one misinterprets me tomorrow. Uh, and that was how we ended. We then ended in the evening. We met with all the political party chairmen and leaders that came. Don't forget this convention was live streamed. Femi Fallon was one of our speakers there. And we decided that as soon as the elections are over, we'll take a break and we'll all come back together and have work towards the convention. It could be a special convention. After the election ended, we were making consultations. But for me, the priority was to release a statement of the accounting of all the money we made, you know. And we did that. And after that, we, of course, started making consultations. Of course, part of it was this trip to Nigeria. But while I was in Nigeria, it came to my attention that the secretary was mobilizing some chairman and members that he knew, or some fake people, because they had gotten money uh, to uh, go and break the party. Uh, we, we ignored it because we wanted people to know the difference between us, the leaders, and those who are claiming to be maridas in the party. And that is what you saw uh, yesterday. Nothing is new to me. Uh, and th th those of you who saw what happened, <laughs> uh, if you saw the interest that AIT, Channels TV, and all the Nigerian media had in it, you understand where all this is coming from. Because these are the same media practitioners for a whole year who didn't allow us to be interviewed on their platforms, who did not interview us, who didn't carry our story. 
even my trip to Nigeria, when I arrived at the airport and there will be thousands of people, they would never carry. They kept saying that there are only two candidates. Now they have them. And even while I was in Nigeria and I attended meetings and went to police station, there was no story about it. But suddenly, they all became interested. These are the same media people, particularly channels, their, their chairman, who prevented me from participating in national debates that eventually became a national disgrace. Uh, suddenly, they were all interested. As I was landing yesterday, I was getting calls from the media, oh, we heard you be suspended by AAC. I said, which AAC? You know, so they've made up their minds. Of course, you know how the process is to see if this could scandalize us. Honestly, it had no impact as far as I'm concerned because it only made us well-known as a principled party who will not do deals with anyone. It only, it only, it only made it known that the government or other political operators in the country are afraid, I mean, really afraid of our platform. Don't forget that before my departure, there was this big story about the central bank where 500 billion naira went missing and we obtained a video of it for Sahara reporters. So I knew also that that really got them riled. And I was expecting the worst. As a matter of fact, one of the officers, uh, when I was passing the airport, said, oh, you know, you are leaving after causing tr so much trouble again. I was, you know, I overlooked, but I know what they were referring to. So that is where we are, uh, ladies and gentlemen. But I wanted to say some specific things that if uh, this person had become the chairman of our party, I would not have become a candidate of the party. That was their plan. So that plan was thwarted. And most candidates knew what we went through trying to get him to register or file for candidates. Uh, these are things that are available in the public domain. But last thing, I mean, not the last thing, but one of the important things to say was that when all of this became unbearable, uh, the party leadership met and suspended him. And in January, we wrote to INEC. So INEC is aware. We also wrote to the bank. Bank changed his uh, name on the signature. Uh, as one of the signatories to the party account. And we had completely stopped dealing with him. And he had been... We've secured, I mean, secured our party secretariat in Abuja from him where he used to host where. Because when we get invited to events, he gets invitation, he will never tell us. When they gave us a list of voters through INEC, he collected it and never gave it to us as candidates. When uh, he was invited to go and speak or discuss issues with us, he would, go, he would never return back to us and give us feedback. The worst he did recently was that he went, after he's been suspended, went to a meeting uh, in Abuja with 75 other political parties and claimed that they are endorsing the fraudulent 2019 elections. When we saw the press release and the news, we thought it was a joke, only to inquire from INEC and people working with INEC and they said he was there to represent our party. So we knew that somebody was pushing him, pushing him uh, or pushing his group. Uh, so nothing is new here. I don't want to waste too much of our time or my time discussing this. But I know a lot of you are interested in hearing the outcome of uh, how this went or you know, how my trip went and what we are doing uh, going forward. What we are doing going forward is simple. The party has suspended this individual and you heard that as of yesterday, uh, that status has also changed to expulsion. And we have notified INEC of his suspension and we are going to notify... I neg of our latest actions. And party leaders across the states, across the world, have also reached out and said, you know, there's nothing to worry about. I, that's not my issue. My issue is that we must continue to hold on to the ideals of our party that has made us be fearful. If there's any reason why anybody should believe in this party, it is what happened. If this party had no potency or ability to challenge the oppressive class in Nigeria, nobody Nobody will remember us. I'm sure you all know that in the last election, over 71 presidential candidates participated in the election. Several parties. I don't know how many of them. And nobody's interested in the other parties because they did not challenge the old order to such, an away, such a way that they are feeling threatened. Right now, right now, they are feeling threatened. And they are threatened by our ideas. They are threatened by our boldness. And they are afraid this is the reason you are seeing the attacks. But do not be in doubt. Do not be uh, under any illusion that they will seize the attack. The attack will continue. 
They are going to come after us with more propaganda. They are going to come after us with physical attacks. They are going to come after us with legal attacks. So you should expect more. But we must remain resolute. Resolute. Ladies and gentlemen, we must remain resolute. We must fight because our enemies are not the people that you are seeing now only. These are just some of their, you know, people. Uh, these are fronts. You know, these are just, you know, their shadows. They are just throwing them. The real enemies, we know them. And we must reach out and make sure that we cripple them and break their hold on Nigeria. You know, it is clear that they are afraid of the ideas we have. It is clear that they are afraid of our organic and resolute nature. It's clear they are, they are afraid of our radical inclinations. It's clear that they are afraid of our fearlessness. It is clear that they are afraid of our ability to organize. And they are, it is clear that they are afraid that we can fight. These are the characteristics of the ruling class, our cowardly ruling class. You know, so this is the reason they throw some little money at this kind of individuals, the people you see in our party, to see whatever they can do to break the party. The party will not break and it will not be broken. And it is not my party, it is your party. It's the party of everybody that is in AAC today and those who have joined AAC even after the election. I must say to you that I was surprised, surprised that so many people, including these grassroots people that you've been talking a lot about, are now interested in our party. They can't, I, there's no one day while I was in Lagos that somebody didn't want to come and see us, ask how they could join, how we can include them in, you know, our agenda and how we can keep fighting for what we believe in. And how many people saw me at airports, on the road and on the streets and said, listen, I'm very sorry I didn't vote for you. I thought these people had something to offer. I apologize. It's called buyer's remorse. So I'm just saying this is good news. Good news for all of us. Good news for those of you who have worked very hard. And good news for those of you who are looking for a party, who are looking for a platform that can enrich your experience, that can help liberate your mind and your body, that can make Nigeria one of the greatest countries in the world. You guys saw it today and you've been coming at me all day long regarding what is happening uh, by the Ondo State governor who went to Thailand to go and look for how to process cannabis. You know, of course, you know, it's a waste of money and time. He should have just given me a phone call. Uh, I would have helped him figure this out because you don't need to go to Thailand to bring a cannabis refinery to Ondo State and create jobs. You just need to sit at home, map out the strategy and get things done. But that's not the issue. The other issue is that all these ideas are there. And every time we spoke throughout the one year that we campaigned for the presidency, they were listening. They were listening, and that is why they are conveniently able to steal these ideas and run with them. But, you know, there's a difference between the originator of an idea and an imitator of an idea. It is the reason why some of our ideas are stolen, they couldn't implement it, because they are not the originators. So it's counterfeit or counterfeiting of ideas. They can't. And that's why Nigerians must look in our direction, pay attention. I mean, pay attention to what we have said and what we are doing and what we are going to do. The other thing I want to address is the issue of uh, the accounting uh, that some of them have uh, been talking about. There was no time uh, that uh, we didn't account for everything we are receiving. In fact, GoFundMe gives you an idea of who contributed and how much we made. You can still go there, it's still alive. And when we were done, we accounted for both cash and kind and made it public. You can find it publicly on our website, aacparty.org, and you can find it on showware2019.org. All these things are made available to the extent that some, some of them were upset that we could provide an accounting of how we spent money, and they said this is the first time it happened in Nigeria. We presented it in such a way that even for people who contributed from outside, we made it possible for them to get their mention on a daily basis, in those days when I used to raise funds, I raised funds and mentioned who gave us money, how much we made on almost every time we were on the couch, which was where we were raising funds. As soon as the elections were over, we stopped uh, raising funds. And uh, because I didn't see any reason for me to keep raising funds for 
uh, an election that is over. Even though people were saying that they want us to start raising funds for 2023, I said to them, we've got to wait. Uh, there must be a strategy for you know, going to the future. But for me, it is building the party, building the cadres, and expanding you know, our reach so that we won't have issues uh, when next time we come. But I imagine that we won't, and I know we won't, because now everybody has come to that understanding that we try to help, I mean, help and save Nigeria. Uh, but mostly, a lot of people are not yet ready for the kind of messaging we had. And we understand why. It's because most Nigerians have been beaten down over these years. And uh, so that's, that's what uh, it is. Uh, there's nothing to worry about. You know, don't bother about the smear campaign. I'm used to it. They have been smearing me since I was in the university. They've called me all kinds. They've been calling us all kinds of names. And uh, even during the election, you guys had what they did, you know, they couldn't find anything on me or any one of us. And you know how they sponsored all kinds of news during that period. Uh, but it didn't work. And today, of all the younger candidates that participated in the election, there is no doubt that there's one that stood out because of you. And that was Shawari 2019 or Shawari Rufai 2019. So I want to take, uh, I want to read out some of the questions you might have for us. Thank you guys for joining. And uh, if there's any one of you out there, you should share this message that more, more of our people uh, can uh, ask questions uh, or see what is going on. And that is what I want to take, you know. So somebody says, start raising fund now. Fantastic. Uh, but again, I won't raise fund without a structure. And we'll discuss extensively with you. For those of you who are outside the country, I'm planning to travel to as many countries as possible. As a matter of fact, in June, uh, we want to go to Greece. Uh, so if you're in Greece, I mean, if you're in uh, that country, Greece, uh, you should let us know. I want to stop by and talk to you. I want to stop by and talk to a lot of people. I want to visit every nook and cranny of Nigeria. We have to start now. So don't be distracted. What you see now is a distraction. Keep the spirit going. Keep the movement strong and make the party uh, firm and stand against oppression wherever they may be, whether it's, happens, whether it's going to happen to you abroad or at home. Nigeria is bleeding, and I mean it. Uh, since I have been in Nigeria in the last maybe 10 years, since 2003, I've been going to Nigeria. The last two years shows that more and more Nigerians are leaving Nigeria than has ever left Nigeria before. There's crisis of all dimensions, ethnic, religious, terroristic, economic, cultural crisis. And our leaders don't plan or have any ideas how to solve these problems. That's why they want to make sure that they strangulate any reasonable opposition voice in the country. And as you know, PDP is not an alternative to APC. They are the same. It's the reason they can't fight them. So that's why nobody takes even Article serious. But just us, just little we did, people are taking us serious and they are not comfortable with the fact that people are taking us serious. Uh, so... Somebody said, uh, when are you coming to Italy, bro? Well, I will do so as soon as possible. I, I'm planning all of this and I'll let you know. So uh, we do not compromise, Pascal. That's true. And uh, say, uh, this is Edo Yamu, Pascal. So say, you yes, raising tier, funds for TRB activities that will raise awareness and bring people together. Well, that's true. But again, for now, uh, I'm not raising funds. It's not a fundraiser. And... Don't worry about it. When we're ready, we'll let you know. And we'll talk and listen to you first. You remember that when we started this whole political movement, we were the first to start the town hall uh, system. And it became uh, the most acceptable way of communicating with people before the political season was over. I have said it, and I'm repeating it here. This last election was not an election. It was a selection. Uh, it was that, you know, uh, INEC awarded or allocated votes to candidates that, uh, you know, in a pre-planned manner. This wasn't an election. I don't want you guys to be under any illusion that an election took place. No election took place. Uh, they just had, you know, allocation of votes done through uh, the electoral bodies that carried out a coalition of uh, election. The elections didn't happen. Maybe some election might have happened in polling units, but it was at the coalition centers that they allocated election results themselves. Uh, so somebody's asking about uh, 
uh, election in local government. We are interested. If you want to participate, let us know. But this time around, uh, we are going to screen people. We were too much in a hurry in the last during the last election. The party was growing, and we didn't look into the characteristics of some of these people. This time around, we have to make sure that we look at the background of people who are carrying our party banners, uh, so that we don't have some kind of some some of the most embarrassing people representing us. And some of them actually believed that this was a money making venture, uh, and they were surprised that we only had one hundred and sixty million naira and did wonders with it. You know, in their minds, they look at it and say, what's 160 million? That's not even enough for a local government election. But with that, which is truly not enough for, you know, uh, a gubernatorial election, we, we did wonders in Nigeria. And, but some of the people that represented us thought it was about money. And uh, they were expecting to have money. Some of them actually went into alliances without our knowledge, uh, which are all the things we are investigating right now again stay uh firm where you are do not uh, be worried and i'll be reaching you from time to time uh to give you information about developments in the party uh and uh starts, let me say let them talk of you my joys that they, they keep us growing uh thank you as you know who is who this evangelist this star say uh great show uh prince oladimeji go ahead mr president okay uh, Mary Ezekiel, yes, say so you like the trolls, we love them too. Uh, uh, this is Elias, we are with you, Your Excellency. Oh, you know, I, you know, there's nothing excellent about the excellencies in Nigeria, so I don't accept the excellency thing. Uh, but I appreciate you guys. This Edward Prince, the maker, what about the election tribunal? Are you in support? Yes, uh, I support any challenge of the election. The reason we didn't go to the election tribunal is because we know that it will be a waste of our time and funds which we don't have, to go to an election tribunal in which the judges are working for the government. This is, this is clear, and I said it when I traveled to Nigeria on a Rise News morning show. The judges are all capitulated. I, as a journalist, I know the history of most of the judges. You cannot get justice out of these judges. Uh, but I do not, in principle, uh, have anything against people who are challenging the election results. Not at all. We just don't have the resources to do it. Uh, now, I don't know how difficult for you to clear the air. What is, I didn't get that part. Shora, you have played with Lion to see your life now. This Lucky or Morrigan. No, I, my life is in good shape. You don't have to worry about me at all. And uh, there's no lion here. Uh, it's just a bunch of uh, cowards. And uh, don't worry. You will soon find out that who the real lions are. So thank you for not letting us down forever. Sam, since a financial statement is not posted on your website, as you said, no, there is financial statement. And it's posted on Twitter. Uh, it was posted on my Facebook page. Uh, we've, we've been posting a financial statement. But I could check on the website. If it's not there, we'll make sure that it's posted there today. Thank you so much. But we have posted financial statement, definitely. Uh, uh, and uh, infographics about how the money was uh, raised and how much was uh, spent and how it was spent don't be scared i'm sorry say you are the most organic conscious people's choice i love you my president um speak we will follow you and our trust emmanuel abagre keep the flag flying femi a femi i and my family are with you anytime any day all our legends are journey um say max sonny say post a statement on your website for all to see if you're indeed clean i will thank you so much for that stop uh but your news agency say otherwise they support Buhari. No, our news agency do not support Buhari. Uh, but the news, the news agency is not me. I'm talking to you as Shore Moyele. Uh, so Facebook is free. Uh, okay. So, uh, I saw the statement analysis. Yes, of course, we posted the statement. Thank you. Please, 2023, please try to make it all of us abroad to vote. Yes, we must fight to ensure that Nigerians living abroad can vote and uh, making sure that we also do electronic voting at home so that people don't have to be churching the way they were churching now. It's a fight. Uh, somebody say, if you want financial statement, inbox me, no problem. Uh, so going forward, vetting and verification of future members and representatives should be paramount. Thank you. My president, you're lifted, but don't mind haters. I don't think we have haters, just people who wish uh, 
to distract, but that's fine. All of them are entitled to it. So somebody said he went on the website and the statement is there, showred2019.org, please. If you haven't seen it, uh, go there and see it. I will always be with you because I trust you. Thank you. Remy Good. it was great to see you last week in Lagos. So they are so scared. That's what Sam, Samson, uh, I mean, Sam Kososis is saying. I know. Uh, Ina says this is a time to fight. Well, there is no time we don't fight, you know, but I don't want us to waste our energy uh, and resources on uh, small fights. This is not a serious fight, and it's just a uh, waste of time, you know. So why were you suspended from the party? I wasn't suspended from the party. I'm telling you, as I'm speaking with you, the certificate of the party is in our possession, the registration certificate. The secretariat of the party is in our control, and we are con completely in control of the party. The person who claimed to have suspended is the person who was suspended in January. And you can also find that information and the reason why he was suspended on our website, aacparty.org. Please check that. So many hypocrites here, this is why Nigeria is where we are now. Don't worry, we need everybody. Um, what is your stand on the disbandment of Lagos State Esco, sir? That's a Lagos State issue, and uh, I have said that let the Lagos State issue sort their own issue. I wasn't involved in uh, uh, disbanding Lagos, just so that you know. We need more people at the local level, I agree with you. And you saw us in Mushin, you saw us in Orile Gomu the other day, and we need to be everywhere. It's not just about me, we need all of you, all of you. Uh, so they said a lot of people are watching, including people who claimed they were at the meeting yesterday where we were suspended. We welcome all of you, and you now know that uh, it was the wrong move, but there's nothing to worry about. Those of you who have questions, feel free to keep reaching out. Uh, so keep us posted when time is there to register. Please, uh, this is also a time to register for the party and support the party. Even though I'm not raising funds, you can donate to the party on the party's page. And I think somebody can put that up. Uh, we have over, you know, we, we have almost 20,000 registered members. I think there are more, but I think online. But most people did not pay because I think they had issues with payments. Uh, the payment system is kind of wonky in Nigeria. And a lot of people were also only interested in supporting the presidential candidates. But now is a good time to, sus to, to support the party as well. Uh, so people are putting up uh, the information about where you can find the account. Uh, so, uh, Sheon Wisdom is watching. Thank you, Sheon. How can you come to Lagos Island? We will do so when I come back. Why not? Uh, we will come everywhere. But it's beyond Lagos. It's everywhere. So, Raya, thank you. Uh, this is uh, a early Monday, Elliot. We say we need you in all villages. Uh, we will come. Remy Goes said we're working on bringing you to Solo. I'll be glad to come. When are you coming to Canada? That's stone throw from here. We'll be there soon, one of these days. Please, uh, let's fight for the aspira to vote in 2023. I agree with you. It must be, it should be compulsory for the aspira to vote. We must fight for it and we will definitely give you information on how best we can achieve this. It's, I'm sorry, I just lost that. Uh, I'm not going to pay attention to individual attacks on either, you know, I mean, those who did this. That's fine. You're free to drop your messages, but do not expect me to be you know uh insulting people that's fine uh so somebody said the payment system wasn't working on the party side who we'll look into that so carry the civil service police army and all of them along why why not we'll do that although go i said uh Morala contributed oh, they left too quickly said um prince that for don't kind say channels tv oh it left so rita i see you there <laughs> and um this is uh, Steph Stevens. The diaspora uh, voting is ultimate. I agree with you completely. When I'm going around the diaspora, we will talk about the strategy to achieve diaspora voting. We have to fight for it. Nobody, and I mean nobody, will give you diaspora voting on the plot of gold. These people don't want people to vote. They don't like votes. They like to be sharing bread and gala uh, and booze and five five thousand naira that they get. They only buy votes. We must have a robust, organic and you know resistance proof um way to fight these people uh for diaspora voting and it's up to us in diaspora because diaspora is sending almost more than nigerian annual budget home every year and they don't want you to vote they'll spit on your face 
And on top of that, you have to go through the indignity of passing through the worst airport in the world when you go home. I just traveled from Nigeria three days ago. Uh, the airport is a, it's in shambles. Nigeria is a sham. It's poorly lit. It's dirty. It's smelly. And most of the things in the airport don't work. They don't function. You know, probably the only thing that's working there is the, the wrong way. Uh, the other time you heard that even armed robbers are now able to penetrate the wrong way to rob planes that are either taking off or landing. It's a shame, uh, but we must change that. So it said, um, it said, we got a lot of Shure fans in Ghana. Oh, yes, Ghana, we're coming back there. We will come back. Shure, why another donation? I didn't ask you for a donation, please. I said, if you want to donate, you should donate to the party. And you can do that on the party's website because the party has an account now and we'll, we'll keep accounting for whatever it's gotten. You know me. I am very particular about um, transparency. That's why I use GoFundMe so that everybody can see it. And the, the Nigerians, any bank account we use, we explain every night how people were donating and mentioning the names of the donors. And we explain how much, uh, and, how much and how the money was spent. So... Uh, please, my president, we need a process where we are brought can vote. We just mentioned that. And uh, they said, um, Jim said, APC and PDB are both looting Nigeria Treasury. That's true. You saw what they did at the Central Bank in that tape that was revealed by Sahara reporters, how they were jostling among themselves to cover up, you know, um, some 500 billion naira that went missing. And they were saying, you know, they cannot let the government to, they can't let uh, their auditors know. It was just panic, but that's how they've been stealing. Like Febi Falano said today in the press release, he said they'll be covering up for the government using the central bank to steal forever. Under Abacha, under Babangida, Babangida, $12 billion uh, was stolen. That is the Gulf War uh, money. After that, Abacha came and stole. You know, after Abacha left, every government has stolen using the central bank of Nigeria. So uh, $500 billion Naira is chicken change compared, that's about $2 billion. They still more than that. You know what they did with Dasuki uh, money, which was the same central bank governor now that was there when Dasuki's money was stolen, money that was meant to fight Boko Haram. Those are the ideas they're afraid of. Those are the things that are scaring them about taking back and our political party. Um, it's a peace space. Some people say, some people say no. Uh, it's highly unfortunate that most Africans are known, sorry, um, I, these things are happening so fast, so I can't. If I can't read you, please uh, apologize for it. I, I'm, I'm trying to. Yeah, revolution now. That's true. That's what we should be using. So, and I see a lot of you. I, I, you know, this is a great number of people watching at this time, and I miss talking to you. I really do miss talking to people on this platform. Uh, I probably need to buy another couch so that we can be doing the couch on a regular basis. Uh, those of you who want the couch to resume. On a regular basis, I don't say daily basis, say I, uh, so we can be talking to ourselves. I think part of the reason why so many of this misinformation is out there is because we have not been speaking to you, our followers, regularly on this platform. Uh, but you also know it's, it's difficult. Some of us have uh, jobs. Most politicians in Nigeria don't have daytime job. So the only job they have is politicking. And that's what these are young people or some of our colleagues who were involved in shenanigans the other day, probably that's what propelled them because they don't have real, you know, real jobs. And you can't blame them for it. They've destroyed the economy, they've destroyed the country. And when people have nothing to eat, have no jobs and have no means of sustenance, it is difficult for them to have principles, to be principled. And that's why they don't understand. They don't get this when they see a principled young person who would not accept bribe, who would not engage in corruption. It's something that is uh, very, very strange to most Nigerians to see that, hey, you know, look at this guy. He could be making billions of uh, uh, Naira. You know, he could sell a story and hush up, but he never, he would never do that. So they don't believe you when you come and say, well, my conscience doesn't allow me to do what is bad. Because if most of these guys are in your position, oh man, they will be billionaires by now. But Guess what? I have been around for 30 years and I, I, I don't, I can't say this enough. And I've seen so many opportunities that would have made me go the other way, but I refused. And I'm happy I did not compromise for 30 years and I would never compromise for the rest of my life. It is not 
a choice that I made just to please anybody. It's a choice that my conscience is at peace with. I'm not doing it uh, to please anyone. I'm doing it just so that apart from being peaceful with myself, being peaceful with my poverty, or being comfortable with my poverty, we can also serve as an example to other young people. And look at what happened in one year. It turns out that there are a lot of young Nigerians out there who like to have a country that works. And they followed us. Some of them followed very late. Some of them voted and their votes were not counted. Uh, some of them are frustrated. Some people saw me in Lagos and said, look, I wanted to vote. I got there. They chased everybody away with bottle, you know, and, and, and machete. Several things, several persons uh, wanted to vote. Some of them were not allowed to vote in Lagos in particular because they were from the southeast. They harassed everybody, you know, it depends on where you are, and they rigged the election wherever, in, in whichever way they could. It was an unconscionable process. It was an act, an act of aggression against Nigerian people. And we must keep condemning it until we take our country back. So that's, uh, that's, that's my message to you guys. Uh, you know, it's, it's just what it is. It said, you know, somebody said the couch is the best way. So ready to donate again or point your directive. Thank you so much. Uh, while you may not be donating to me, please uh, do not forget there are a lot of causes in Nigeria uh, that you can donate to. And uh, some, of, some of you may not even send money to a foundation. You can, through our Take It Back movement, help people in Nigeria. You know, and we've been discussing this for since we even uh, came back from Nigeria. A lot of people have been helping others. With, you know, one of our members set up a library in Ogun State. Some of our members paid for WAEC fees for kids uh, in uh, a refugee camp in Benue State. We can do that. I, I have to tell you that I'm not, you know, a big fan of philanthropy that is driven by politics. You know, I prefer that whatever we are doing now is sustainable over time. Uh, but whatever you are, because I know most of you want to help people at home, look for a way to join up and ensure that we have people on the ground. A lot of young people that joined us, good young people uh, who are willing to continue the tradition of helping and conscientizing and mobilizing and educating people about the future. That they've been doing a fantastic job at that. But some of them have no support and since we're not raising money, they can't get support. So I guess we'll talk to our team and see how these things can be directed. But for now, I have said and I'll repeat it again, don't send money to me, don't donate to me, I'll, I'll be fine. Uh, when we're ready to ask you for your help again, we will do so. And it will be very clear the same way we did that last time. Yes. So they say, what happened to the Lagos ESCO? Uh, of course, uh, you guys heard somebody asking. Lagos is dealing with their own issue uh, locally. And uh, several of the states are doing so as well. So, um, so if you have any questions, I'm, I have another, uh, another 10 minutes to go. It's, it's 12.44 here in the U.S. I guess that's uh, 5.44 in Nigeria. Actually, not 10 minutes. I'll take another 15 minutes, which will take us to 1 o'clock, so I can answer any of your questions. You know. So we're trying to gather uh, Shawaref's fans in Ghana. Feel free. You know, it's not Shawaref's fans. It's... Uh, People who I love with freedom, and uh, when when you gather them and you let me know, I will definitely come to Ghana to see them. You know, he said, uh, "Relax yourself." I'm totally relaxed. Trust me, there's no cause for alarm on my end. I just came from Nigeria yesterday, and wherever I went in Nigeria, I was at peace with myself, and we did go to a lot of places. Yeah. So, what thing Benin people do? You know, there's nothing wrong with Benin people. Honestly, I must thank the people of Benin uh, City, particularly, especially our brothers who live abroad. This gave us lots and lots of support. Uh, so many of the support they were giving, were giving it directly to some of our organizers on the ground. Don't let anybody uh, give an impression that we don't appreciate anyone. We appreciate everybody. Thank you so much. So. So how can we get uh, party activities to be more transparent and uh, more involving? Uh, you know, we're a digital party. And so being a digital party means that we have people all over the world. And I think 
part of the most transparent way is what I'm doing now, engaging with you online. In fact, we are planning that we'll be the first party to have an online you know, convention where every member of the party who's a, uh, who's a paying member can participate. So thank you, President. You're not just a leader, but a father. Thank you so much. Neil sent just a boy. So please should be, no, I, I missed that. I'm going to read a few more. Voting online will be possible, sir, in Europe. Why not? If we want to ask for online voting for Nigeria, our party should be able to vote online. How can we orientate our people about this party? We start now, we have a website and uh, we will be uh, giving support uh, to anyone who wants to join the party. Hello, sir, how can we connect? Uh, how did uh, Buhari respond to the 500 billion that was stolen? The people that stole 500 billion are Buhari people. You know, Buhari only responds against people who are not his people when they steal. That's Buhari for you. What's uh, in line with this in South Africa? We've told our South African colleagues to step up activities there and uh, we're sure they will do the right thing. So, so this is uh, online convention. Somebody said, though, why not? Uh, we can have offline and online convention. But I would prefer that uh, we have an offline convention as well as an online convention for those who may, be, who may not be able to travel to Nigeria. You know what it did to us during the election? A lot of Nigerians traveled home to vote for us on February 16th, which was my birthday. They changed the date abruptly. And most of them had to leave. They had to come back to wherever they're coming from. So that was uh, the thing. Uh, Nigeria must progress not to dictatorship, February 2023. I think the voting online is better. Thank you. Uh, Somebody is giving you the direct link to our account online. Please check it out. Click it and download so you can see for yourself. So are you still working for Sahara Reporters? Well, I have a job. You know, I was, I'm the founder of Sahara Reporters. So, but while I was doing the elections, I didn't work for Sahara Reporters. But I'm considering going back to working actively again. And also, apart from Sahara Reporters, I'm a university teacher. They call it professor in the U.S. I teach every uh, once. Uh, I teach a class every semester in African, um, you know, history. A history class on uh, post-colonial African uh, history in New York. So I'm planning to go back there in September. So my focus in the U.S. and the concern of most hardworking individuals during the last election. Okay, I didn't see the rest of that. Improve the party activity on a local level. It's not about me. Uh, it's about all of us, guy man. I understand you are sorry. I didn't see that. You impose your friends on the party. That's not true. Um, who is? Uh, I don't want to know. tell us what transpired between you and no. I, I don't pay attention to. I don't have any individual issues to address. So what he's talking about Smarter Jaja leaning back in. Uh, we are in touch with Smarter Jaja, and when it comes to legal issue, we have a legal advisor. And he advises the party on what to do on legal matters. So for years, not forever. So please, I need an answer to this question. Do you think Nigeria will forever be good? Oh, no, it, it's possible. It depends on us. And I must tell you, uh, on this trip to Nigeria, I find it very, very, very sad. Very sad. I, I must report back to some of you. I met a lot of people, a lot of people who said they are starting to give up on Nigeria. And it's scary. It's scary. Very scary. I'm just asking if, uh, you know, I, I'm not interested in taking a job with the government. I'd rather work, you know, uh, nine to five than work for a government that I know has no interest in making Nigeria better. So can we sign an online uh, petition to get uh, the CBN governor arrested? Why not? Uh, you can start an online petition and it will spread. Uh, but the question is if they will care about your petition. I don't think the Buhari government cares about petitions. Yeah. Um, how can we confront these looters in power? Well, we have to take them on wherever we find them. Uh, but at home, uh, we can organize and take them on and take them out. No doubt. Yeah. So we have uh, some nine minutes to go. This is uh, my time on the couch. Actually, love sits today, uh, and uh, to talk to you about 
so many of you reached out to me to ask my opinion about what happened yesterday. Uh, I'm reassuring you that there's nothing to worry about. They are trying to steal the party, but they can't because it's our party. We we formed the party. We founded and funded the party, and it's our party. Nothing, nobody can take the party away from us. They will try. There's no question about it. And this is not new. They've always tried to do this. They do this to in every political party. Anytime they see a progressive political party, they throw money at you know infiltrated place, throw some money at uh, people there to scatter the party. And that's what they're trying to do. It's to create an appearance that there's crisis in our party. But you know, since yesterday, uh, everybody has come and said, look, uh, this is just rubbish. And that's what it is. Don't be distracted by what is happening. When are you coming to France? France, uh, if you get in touch with us, maybe I can stop by in France when I go to Greece in June. Yes, because we never really, really uh, went to France and I would love to do that. So let us know. And you know how to reach us. You can reach me on this platform as well and uh, talk to me about it. Try visit Nigerian University to speak with them about politics. I agree with you. Uh, let's plan that. That's the word. Time on the couch. Yes. We're going to start spending time on the couch again. Diasporans less than able to register to vote physically in Nigeria. Why we agitate for diaspora voting? I agree with you. But, you know, while you want to vote in Nigeria, also be ready to fight so that your vote can count. How do we conquer Tinubu? by taking him on and other godfathers and uh, making sure that they lose out. There's no big deal about them. Yeah. What's the last word on the chairmanship controversy? There's no controversy. Uh, it's a contro contrived controversy. And it will be, it came and it has fizzled out and it will fizzle out, trust me. Um, we are fighters. You know, there's nobody on our side except some of them who are cowards. We've been fighting for our lives, for our freedom, for our space, for our tough. Uh, since I was 18 years old in 1989 at the University of Lagos. And we're still standing and still fighting. You know, you saw what happened during the election. We fought for everything. We fought to be able to get on a plane. We fought to be able to even film in Nigeria live when at the airport we fought to get on the debate we fought for everything even on the day of election you saw how they came with soldiers to my village we had to fight them so fighting is our life the struggle is our life and we must not give up so guys just make sure you take it back so rumors everywhere regarding shore uh, there's no rumor shore is here in front of you i just came to the u.s yesterday i was in nigeria before uh, now, and uh, we're completely, completely in order. So we need Members Care Service Center. Well, this is why you should donate to the party so that the party can fund that. But again, I am not raising money for myself. If you want to donate to the party, uh, the party can fund Care Center. Uh, but the party has an account. Go to the party's website and if you have any issues, uh, drop us a message. All right, because Mr. President kind of text Kadira, but I didn't see that. Go in and drink Gary. Oh, bro. Head to Nubu is contesting for 2023. We had two. Probably that is part of the reason why they're trying to kill AAC so that the, the ground will be level for them. They won't be able to find someone that will challenge them, but they're just wasting their time. Some of them will not survive till 2023 i'm not i'm not making a prediction it's a prophecy that those who have destroyed nigeria so many of them will fall by the wayside uh between now and 2023 take it back radio please wow i like that idea we just have to fund it yes take it back radio take it back radio great idea let us hold firm and hold on to the party ideas. Yes, watching live. Uh, so a lot of you are watching live. Thank you so much. I know you're watching live. We have four more minutes to go. Yeah, four more minutes. I say Rosemary's there that says, stop deceiving yourself. No, I'm not deceiving myself. You know me. Uh, there's no room in my life to deceive myself. I'm just 
very good at telling truth to power, right? Thank you, Omer Brande. AC for life, as I didn't get show you, but thank you. Meeting Julius Malema in the future, looking forward to it. You really need to create that time to visit. Oh, no, I didn't see that. Uh, but if you are insinuating that there's somebody special in the party, nobody special, everybody is the same. So, I made a solution, Momo. It's, uh, it's a party I wear that. Oh, I didn't see that. It said, how many votes did you get when the vote is public knowledge? Uh, it's, the election is not transparent and fair. So, yeah. Timetable for couch, please. We'll let you know as soon as we're ready. <laughs> yes. Don't give up, Shure. Thank you, God is on your side. God bless you, Mr. President. That's Mwabuze. Uh, Kim, I've been bored. I think it should be better if you link the accounts to the public. The accounts are public. It's on the website. The person who asked at the beginning of this conversation that there's no account on the website, you've now been told where to find it. Uh, but I also, the, apart from putting it on the website, it was also on Twitter, it was on Facebook as soon as we released it, you know. To take it back, Radio TV, why not? Yes, I used to be your best, but now you are corrupt. That's not true. Uh, you better get the facts right. We just, we've provided them for you. Please take advantage of the information you have so that you don't get confused and lie to all the time. You know, Nigerian leaders like to preach to gullible people, uh, you know, so. Yeah, so um, we have another two minutes to go, guys. And in two minutes, that'll be it. Thank you so much, people who are watching. Erica Ayawu, let me thank you. Lawa Kende, uh, thank you. Tommy Lee, thank you so much. The U Samson Felix, watching, thank you. Ayo Gundimo, I see you there. Shegwa Dewumi, thank you. Uh, Bodun Ayilora Abimbola, thank you so much. Marvin Brown, Peyton Genesis, thank you. Michael Gaskin, thank you for watching. Rosemary, thank you for watching. Uh, watching. Uh, Haima Manchi, uh, thank you. Emma Ekwase, thank you so much for watching. Wale Jimo, uh, thank you. Grace Oweye, thank you so much for watching. And Egan, uh, thank you for watching. Princess Iroko, uh, thank you for watching. Chidi Wanyao, our governor in Imo State, thank you. Akim Olayewola, thank you so much for watching. And uh, by the way, additional, Tonya Shaolu, Thank you, thank you. Morphe Wisdom, thank you. Uh, we cannot give up. Choice JJ, uh, thank you for watching. Peter Sage, thank you, much love to. Uh, Rosemary again, thank you for coming back and being part of this show throughout. Your views are very important to us as well. I hope you learned some few things. Samuel Dada, thank you. Uh, Lawa, Lawa uh, Kendi, thank you again. Uh, Marvin Brown, Peyton Genesis, thank you. Wale Jimo. Thank you for watching. Uh, and Daro Osa, thank you. Thank you, Daro. It's good to see you there. Shiboy, uh, Nat Remy, Ibinosa Robert Sujen, thank you so much. Or Dauphin, Fire Me, thank you. NJ Jerry, thank you. The Hurricane is back. Kudus, Oluatobi, Oladimeji, Tolu Timi. Uh, it's 1 p.m. now, guys. Thank you so much uh, for watching. I hope uh, you got some of the information or most of the information you need regarding the party. We will be back again uh, next time, probably in another place. But for those of you who are in Greece in June, I'm coming towards you and be ready. And while I, uh, I'll be in Greece in June, I might stop uh, in Italy, Germany, or France, depending on how we're able to quickly pull that together. This will be around between June 12th and beyond. I'll be in Europe. Thank you guys again for joining me today. Thank you for the opportunity to interact with you. And uh, I'll say Aluta Continua Victoria Etc. Uh, take it back. Action. Action. No going back. Have a nice uh, day, evening, wherever you may be. And good night if you're going to bed. This is uh, me again, Shore Omoye uh, The chairman. I'll say pro time because... Uh, I hope that we'll be able to have a convention that will elect, you know, the permanent chairman soon of uh, the African Action Congress and also ex-presidential candidates. 
of uh, the AAC. And uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you today. Hope to see you guys soon very much. Thank you.